Greetings ladies and gentlemen, Doc Phil here bringing you some Heart of the Swarm action. As you may be able to tell, I'm not particularly sure if anyone will be able to, but either way, uh, there is a bit of a, uh, a change to the way I'm set up. I am going to be using XSplit to record locally, just to, just to give it a go. Like, I know a lot of other people actually use XSplit to record everything themselves. Uh, I normally have been using uh, Fraps along with Audacity to record sound, but this time I've got a new microphone, I've got a very snazzy uh, blue snowball, as, uh, as advised by a couple of other people in the business. So I'm going to be using that, so hopefully from me, uh, as you can hear me, it'll be sounding a little bit better, and hopefully things are all looking good as well. We're going to be watching a Protoss versus Protoss from Heart of the Swarm. Uh, and just by the way, with, with those changes to both uh, the way I'm recording and also uh, the microphone, all these cool things, please do let me know if you, if you have any issues like with the sound, with the microphone, with the game sounds, anything like that. Let me know if the levels are off a little bit and I'll adjust it for this time, uh, for next time, sorry. So uh, this is a little bit of a test in a way, so uh, in a way. And as we can see, our red Protoss down the bottom right hand side here is MGG's Alpha. He's a local player from Australia. He's been doing a little bit of action in Heart of the Swarm after getting himself a, uh, a beta key and playing around. We'll see what he gets up to here on Star Station, I believe this map is called, if I remember it correctly. His opponent up at the top right hand side in the blue is going to be Ma. Now Mar, of course, uh, will be starting. It's a pretty long distance to get to your opponent, like regardless of positioning on the map. As we can see, I'll just uh, sort of scroll down. Look at this distance. I have to actually uh, reset my mouse so I can move it properly. There you go. Look at that. It is quite a long distance to get down to your opponent. And uh, as such, it's, a lot of players tend to expand pretty quickly on this map. And even yes, I know that sounds really weird to hear that in Protoss vs Protoss, but it is definitely possible. You can get things out like the Mothership Core, which really helps out in early, uh, in early defense and that kind of stuff. It's, uh, it's a really nice way to be able to expand quickly in PvP. You can do things such as a one gate, uh, one gate Robo expand if you want to be very safe. You can also do just a simple one gate expand if you would uh, like to go down that more, a little bit more of a riskier uh, path to go down. But We'll see what happens. As we can see, both players are uh, getting their gas going for Alpha. He's got both of his gas active at the moment, and so does Ma. So uh, they're sort of just talking about the differences in uh, in the region, because of course, uh, Heart of the Swarm is on a global server at the moment. So there are no uh, sort of, uh, you know, there's there's always a lot of cross-regional sort of stuff going on. As as uh, as we can see here, we've got a uh, as a player from West Canada against uh, someone from uh, Eastern Australia, so it's pretty cool. But uh, yeah, so, so uh, other things in Protoss versus Protoss have changed a little bit. Um, of course, blink builds have been quite strong, uh, just because of the fact that you no longer need to sort of wait around to get an observer out. If you, uh, you, of course, you can time things so that robo blink builds are generally nicely synced up, but in this you can do some pressure with an early, uh, with your early mothership core, and as we can see here, Mara has actually gone for an extremely fast mothership core here, getting that out, even foregoing a, uh, a stalker and getting just a zealot out for the defense at the moment, along with that mothership ship core. So what this does, it lets him save up a bit of energy because you do need 100 energy for the photon overcharge and then what you can do with that, once the Nexus goes down, as we can see Ma doing here, you can get the uh, you can get the, the Nexus switched into the photon overcharge Nexus which does 20 damage per shot and has a really nice range as well. So we, we will see a difference in the play styles here between these two players. Uh, Alpha has not gotten his mothership core out just as of yet. His warp gate tech is over halfway done and he does have a gateway uh, prepared to switch over there, but uh, other than that, he doesn't actually have too much. So what we can see from him at the moment is just a little bit of a, uh, I, I wouldn't call it a fake pressure, it will do, it will be able to uh, sort of put Mara in a little bit of an interesting spot, perhaps a bit of micro here between these two players. As we can see, Alpha just sort of uh, started stepping those stalkers back, perhaps a couple of shots on that mothership core, uh, or as we uh, have affectionately, affectionately been calling it, the MoCo, but um, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't actually take too much damage, only a Zealot getting a little bit of hurt there. Uh, but as we can see, the probe from Alpha gets to scout out what's going on. Saw that there are a couple of extra gates and a Stargate just coming up now as well, so he'll be able to prepare for that. Now, other things that have changed in PvP, um, I've been saying it for quite a while, but uh, Heart of the Swarm PvP changes quite a lot because of the Tempest allowing you 
uh, a, a way to deal with Colossus Endgame instead of having ridiculous, uh, you know, 20 Colossus versus 20 Colossus battles that you will still see these days in Wings of Liberty, you will actually have games that can be very, uh, you know, they get, they get thrown in a bit of a spin because players will tend to grab something like, uh, you know, two to three, maybe even four Tempest out, and then you can actually counter those Colossus really, really well, and it makes it, it makes it really interesting. But uh, one other thing that we can see here that Alpha and, of course, Ma have both gone for is a Phoenix opening. So this, uh, this can transition into things such as getting an Oracle out to do a little bit of pressure. If you can throw that into one of the mineral lines, everybody knows how devastating they can be there. If you give them a few seconds and a bit of energy, they will tear up workers inside a mineral line. But uh, for the moment, it looks like both players are just going to go for a standard sort of uh, a Phoenix-based play. Um, Alpha has uh, has been doing quite a lot of these, uh, as uh, as he has told me, in PvP. And also, he's been using carriers in some of his games, along with uh, carriers in PvZ as well. So, here we go. It looks like the uh, Phoenix is going to get inside. you got to be very careful with those. You don't want to lose any of these initial Phoenix. They're really good for scouting, really good for picking up some of these probes. And as we can see, beautifully done. Picks up a few of those, and he gets uh, five worker kills there for his uh for his troubles, so that's not too bad at all. Of course, continuous production of the Phoenix. If you see your opponent going for, uh, also going for Phoenix in a PvP, you probably want to just continue on that uh, the Phoenix production. You really don't want to be left in the lurch with a with a much lower uh, Phoenix count because that can obviously turn into a situation where you're getting picked off. Uh, if, if all of your Phoenix get picked off, you can be in a very troublesome spot when it comes to defending against his Phoenix unless you go for cannons and stalkers and all those sorts of things which actually uh, can kind of hurt you in the long run. So Alpha going to continue to put on some of this pressure here, just roaming into the natural, picking up a probe or two as we can see some of those beautiful new death animations. I love the physics in Heart of the Swarm. The changes have been really, really cool in that regard. But uh, Alpha is still just going to put the pressure on. Now, the thing that I do when I'm playing this particular build, because I have been doing this for quite a long time, including in Wings of Liberty, as many people who watch my stream will know, is that what you want to do, you want to treat the Phoenix that you build, especially when you're going up to a higher amount like this, you want to treat them like a, uh, a, a bunch of muters. You want to fly them around, you want to keep your opponent in here, you want to say, you know, look buddy, at any time I might be inside your mineral line killing up some of those probes, and that's not cool at all. So, uh, it kind of forces your opponent to stick inside their main base, as we can see here, despite having a, a couple of stalkers out and, and, you know, a few more extra units, Mar has not been able to move out yet, and here we go with seven Phoenix. So, Alpha is continuing to push those out. He's also got plus one to air weapons just about to complete and Anion Crystals is also being researched. You don't really see that too often coming out of that fleet beacon, but uh, getting that uh, upgrade is a really, really good thing in PvP. I actually played against uh, Roots Puck the, uh, a couple of weeks back and uh, we actually had a Phoenix battle. It was quite a lot of fun. Uh, but uh, in the end, I completely forgot about the Annie and Crystals upgrade, and uh, in the end, that gave Puck that a very easy win at that point, because as I said, once your Phoenix go down, if you're in a Phoenix versus Phoenix kind of match, uh, you can find yourself in quite a spot of trouble. So at the moment, Alpha is, is generally just controlling a lot of the map. As we can see from his vision, he's got one of these big watchtowers right at the top side of the map. He doesn't have his own one, but that's not really going to matter too much at this stage. And uh, of course, he is then able to expand a little bit quicker here down at this third position, uh, down at the 6 o'clock base. So he's able to uh, go and grab that. As we can see, very minimal kind of forces right at the front door. There are three Stalkers, two Zealots, and a Mothership Gore. That is it. So Alpha is in uh, a very interesting position here. As we can see, there is a bit of a Phoenix versus Phoenix battle here. Alpha should be able to win this one. His plus one has already kicked in, and he's mostly, for, well, I don't know, for the most part, he did win that battle. He did have the uh, the Anion Crystals as well, but uh, it looks like uh, just because of a few shots from, from uh, I think, this cannon uh, helped out quite a bit, gave, uh, gave Mara a little bit of a victory in that little battle. But... As I said, if he can keep up the production, uh, as we can see back at home, chrono boosting out some of these extra units, and he's actually going for Void Rays now. So he's going to switch it up, and we're going to add in those guys, of course. Uh, Void Rays in Heart of the Swarm have a new ability called Prismatic Alignment, which gives them uh, plus six damage against all armored units for 20 seconds. There's no there's no uh, energy cost or anything like that, but it, uh, it obviously does have a slight cooldown. Um, but uh, that's a really nice way to try and complement an air air based force by being able to deal with stalkers extremely quickly because of course that means that Phoenix uh, sorry the void rays do 
uh, how much is it? 17 damage, basically, uh, yeah, uh, per half a second. So it's actually ridiculously fast, and it can really help out in those battles. So we can see that Mario is continuing to get those Phoenix out. He's up to six at the moment, uh, and he is going to continue to produce more after that as well. The worker count looking relatively even at the moment. It, uh, I, I am uh, happy to see that Alpha is actually ahead of his opponent. He's up to 62 workers right as of now. Uh, he does, of course, have that very quick third base compared to his opponent, who is only just finishing up his own third base now. So, Mar is uh, just a tiny bit behind. I wouldn't really put him in a bad position, but uh, he will need to try and catch up specifically with those air upgrades, because at the moment, he's only just finished plus one, and Air Crystals is on the way, and Alpha will probably look to start getting some carriers and perhaps, uh, you know, some Tempest out at this point, because that's what you've got to be wary of. As I mentioned before, uh, is that uh, other, your opponent may go for carriers, your opponent may try and get a quick mothership to help out with, uh, with that uh, area of effect cloak that comes out from that, and also, uh, you know, if, if there is a possible uh, Colossus switch on the way, you want to be ready for that kind of thing. So, uh, as we can see, Alpha is just going to fly in here to the third base. Should be able to pick up all of these probes and get rid of every single one there. That's not going to help out Ma at all. But uh, they all do go down. The last one inside the gas does survive. That guy is pretty happy, I tell you what. Uh, and he is also going to find that Ma is attempting to head across to pick up that fourth base. So we'll see how Ma is going to deal with this. Just looking at uh, his production at the moment. Still just uh, waiting on getting some more units out. Going to be a couple of carriers here from Ma. He does have three Stargates, just as Alpha does. And it looks like the, both of these guys are actually going to go for carriers. So this is the part where PvP very much differentiate, uh, differentiates, differentiates is in a word I don't think, uh, where it uh, differentiates from Wings of Liberty PvP in the fact that you can go down this route. If, if you saw someone going for three uh, three Stargate carriers in, uh, in like, even though it was a large map like this, in Wings of Liberty, you may think, well, that guy's a bit crazy, he's about to lose. But in this, uh, in Heart of the Swarm, it's a big change, and as you can see, the Phoenix just tearing up. It looks like uh, Mar has replied in his own kind with some of his Phoenix just ripping up those probes. The probe count looking uh, a little bit dismal for Alpha right now, 54 to 65. So uh, Mara's has done a good job catching up with that. Of course, back at home for him, he's got three carriers on the way. A couple are just about to finish up. Uh, is Graviton Catapult? Not just yet. So the Graviton Catapult will be on the way very soon for him. Uh, it is not, uh, not done for Alpha either. I'm a little bit surprised about that, but... Um Either way, both of these guys heading up towards the carry tech. But as I was saying, Heart of the Swarm allows you to be a little bit more free with the way you want to play. You can you can, uh, you can can throw out carriers, you can push out uh, a couple of Colossus, maybe a couple of Tempest as well. And actually, it can, you know, there's still a lot of room to moon, uh, sort of play around and maneuver. So there's still quite a lot of options to be explored in Heart of the Swarm. And as we can see, Ma doing a fantastic job with those Phoenix, just jumping inside the mineral line. Worker kill count total up at 27 for Ma right now. So he's doing a really good job with those and uh, he's going to continue to pressure he's uh, effectively he's put the uh, the onus back on alpha to try and make sure he's defending well against the phoenix because they're just roaming through this space and just tearing up all of those probes no questions asked and uh, after all of that they're going to head back home and uh, you know that's going to be a pretty good day here for mars so he's got a couple of carriers out as well as we can see the graviton catapult now complete for both players so they're going to be able to uh, throw out those interceptors a little bit sooner than uh, than you would with Without that upgrade, uh, Alpha has taken a fourth base down the bottom left hand side. Of course, this is extremely far away from uh, where his opponent's base is. Well, obviously, it's cross spots, so it's uh, quite far away from where you would expect the normal sort of bases to be, but of course in this map, the other sort of expansions are in the middle here, these uh, these two center expansions just on the side, there is also another one uh, just across the edge as well, but uh, we haven't seen either of these players go for it, because it, it is a little bit exposed, so, like obviously if Ma had, had have taken his right now, he would have uh, lost that by now. But as we can see, it looks like we are going to have a little bit of a battle. Uh, not sure about the surface area here for Mari. Sort of pulled back into the choke point, which may not work too well for him. Carriers, Phoenix, Void Rays, Archons, all having a go here in this battle. It looks like Ma is going to have the upper hand. He's starting to take down the Carriers and the Void Rays of Alpha, and that's going to put him in a very troublesome spot. Alpha does get a couple of Zealots into the uh, into the main section of that, but uh, it's a little bit too late. The Phoenix trying to dance their way back home because they are not going to have a fun time at all. And it looks like while the, the Zealots may escape for the time being, I don't think they're going to get too much damage done here in this mineral line. In fact, they actually charge under the cannons, which means they're actually going to get no kills at all. So. 
Uh, that's, uh, you know, a bit of a, an unfortunate situation here for Alpha being that far down. He's now down to 82 supply. He's got, obviously got, uh, you know, he's got lots of units pumping out at the, at, uh, at this present time. Three Tempests on the way, plus three to Weapons is also on the way. A couple of extra Stargates just to supplement the production capabilities that he has. And, uh, he'll, he'll be putting himself, he's really got to just sit back and, uh, just sort of wait at this time. When you play air, air uh, PvP like this, the Sky Toss style, as many people are calling it, you have to be very careful with your army. If you, if you, it's a little bit like playing Terran Mech, where if you lose a lot of that very high, uh, high intensity, high value army here, as, uh, as Alpha did, you put yourself back quite a lot. And as we can see here with the supply, uh, quite far behind, we've got Mars sitting up at 159. Alpha is only at 109, so he's only just bringing back some of that right now. But uh, with the five Stargates, we may be able to see him uh, get back into this. But he is going to have a little bit of trouble because the Phoenix of Mar are going to be stalking around the map. They haven't actually found this fourth base yet, but they can assume that it is there. Of course, the cannon's going to be covering most of the directions here. Of course, you will be able to uh, protect all of these sorts of areas. But... Uh, you know, we'll have to see if Ma decides to go in. It looks... I, I would say, uh, you know, I would probably go in on that. It's just a couple of cannons. It's not really too many, but uh, he's going to try and just float about and perhaps find another weak spot. But uh, as it seems, Alpha has come back. He does have the uh, the plus one extra on the weapons that uh, Ma does not have in the Phoenix stance. Looking beautiful there. In fact, I am sorry, Ma actually has the plus one on the upgrades right now. So he's actually slightly ahead in his upgrades for the moment. So... And uh, yeah, this is has indeed been an interesting game, as uh, Alpha has mentioned. Um, I'm a, a little bit curious to see if uh, either of these guys are going to use the Mothership Core, or if they're going to keep it as the Mothership Core, or switch it into a full Mothership for the Cloaking Ash. And of course, if you keep it as the Mothership Core, then you have the ability to recall your forces if you fall into a troublesome spot. However, if you have the Mothership out, it gives you Cloak ability. A lot of times in Sky versus Sky Protoss games, uh, a lot of players will fall go robo production in fact i'm not even sure if either of these guys have a robo no there's there's, there's no robo on the map just uh, you know keep that in mind wings of liberty fans uh no robo on the map so uh, as i was about to say a lot of a lot of players won't have their detection and will probably try to uh rely on things like the mothership caused uh own detection ability uh in vision but as we can see, no one's going to go for the Mothership Core just yet. It looks like Mara is in a beautiful position right now, up at 189 supply. He has a total of 11 carriers. They do have their plus three on their weapons. One and one on armor and shields. And for the moment, it looks like Alpha just has a bunch of uh, a bunch of tempers back home. It's only four. I'm not sure this is going to work out too well for him because, of course, tempers need to be in a little bit of a high account to actually deal with carriers of this amount. Uh, but as you can see, it looks like Mara is going to push into this side of the map and clean up the fourth and attempted fifth base of Alpha. And now, as we can see, he should be able to clean up this fourth as well because there is really no way that that's going to be stopped. Uh, all of these carries here, eight carries in total. There are a couple back home. I'm, I'm a bit, a bit, uh, bit sad that Ma hasn't brought them along for the party. But as we can see, he's going to clean this up, no questions asked. The Tempest coming along, trying to do what they can, targeting down some of these these carriers. Very nicely done. In fact, uh, Alpha may be able to sweep through and clean up the rest of this. But there it is, a beautiful recall from Mar, and he's able to uh, pull all those very, uh, as we said, high valued units back home, and he should be able to keep most of them alive, and uh, Alpha is left to clean up the scraps, a few of these zealots that are inside the fourth base. So, where did those, uh, where did the carriers go? I think they, I'm not actually sure. Okay, they, they sort of moved, uh, they moved back towards the, uh, the top side of the map, uh, but uh, anyway, Either way, uh, Mara's done a really good job of keeping those units alive, and as we can see now, he's got more te more Tempest on the way, carries as well. Mothership Core is now switching into the Mothership itself. As we can see, that's going to forego some of these uh, some of these skills here. We're not going to have the Photon Overcharge or the Envision. It is going to have uh, some of those other normal skills that you do see, though. Of course, there is a there is a bit of a dif there is a bit of a difference. Of course, the uh, the vortex is now this very weird-looking single target kind of thing. So. I'm not actually sure what uh, what the plan is for that if you do have a Mothership Core, but uh, previously in PvP and Wings of Liberty, you could use a, uh, a Vortex to suck up quite a lot of the Colossus and try and use that to your advantage, but you're not going to be able to do that this time. Meanwhile, uh, as we can see, for Alpha, he's got a few Tempests out. we got 
got five at the moment and four carriers, a couple more being uh, produced right now. Two more are about to pop out. Just looking at the upgrades for Alpha, he's still got plus one to air armor on the way, so he's quite far behind in that regard. But he is uh, in a bit of a troublesome spot, so we'll see how he's going to come back from this. Mothership is now fully switched in to her uh, final form, as you would say. And uh, as we can see, Mass Recall, still the same as where it is in a, um, as a Mothership Core, in that you don't recall onto the Mothership, you recall back, quite like a hero in, uh, Warcraft 3. And he's got a very potent force here. We've now got 2-2-3 two, two, on the upgrades for all of these air units. There's a Void Ray thrown in there just for sexy looks because it is the chandelier of the sky. We've got a total of 7 Tempests. We've got all of these carriers as well. 7 of those as well. And that is going to be a very deadly force for Alpha to try and deal with. Back at home for him. He's got a whole heap of Phoenix. We have, uh, how many is that? 13 Phoenix out for him. That's not too bad at all. They only have 0 one, three on their upgrades. But for Alpha, he's got 6 carriers. He's got a couple of Tempests here. In fact, uh, there is that Mothership Core as well. And we'll see how he's going to deal with this. Because, of course, the Mothership Core will be needed to throw down its Envision spell. But here we go. The battle is on Tempest versus Tempest versus Carrier and Carrier. Phoenix thrown into the mix. And this is a massive air battle. As we can see, it's just sort of all switching around here with... Uh, Units being destroyed left, right, and center, and Alpha just does not have the firepower. He does not have that potency to try and deal with all of these tempers, with all of the carriers, of course, with the hidden units as well because of the uh, because of the mothership. But uh, as we can see, he throws up the envision on the mothership court and tries to throw down uh, a little bit of detection there as well. But Alpha is in quite a lot of trouble, and he's got no real way to deal with these carriers anymore. The tempers are going to be chewed up. Looks like the uh, Tempest from Amara are also going to do the job here, firing down, and there is a GG. Really, really interesting game from these two guys. Um, PvP really thrown in a bit of a spin because of the way that you can go for these air styles, and it is, uh, it is certainly quite viable. If you haven't tried it already, I would certainly recommend uh, playing some air PvP. It looks like a whole bunch of fun. Anyway, I hope you guys all enjoyed that, and we'll catch you all next time.